Hi, so in this video, I will be discussing about latex allergy. So what is latex allergy? Latex allergy is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction in which the specific allergen is a problem found in processed natural latex rubber products. Latex allergy is diagnosed by test, steam testing or scratch testing, CBC, rust test, or radioallergo solvent test. By the way, radioallergo solvent test is to identify immunoglobulin E or any antibodies in the blood. So here we have the risk factors. People with spina bifida, people who undergo multiple surgeries, healthcare workers, rubber industry workers, personal or family history of allergy. The mild latex allergy signs and symptoms are itching, skin redness, hives, or rashes. The more severe symptoms are sneezing, runny nose, itchy watery eyes, scratchy throat, difficulty breathing, wheezing, and coughing. The life-threatening symptoms are difficulty breathing, hives or swelling, nausea, and vomiting, wheezing, drop in blood pressure, dizziness, loss of consciousness, confusion, and rapid or weak pulse. Latex allergy occurs in two ways, direct or inhalation. So next, let's talk about the pathophysiology of latex allergy. It starts with exposure to latex. It is the, the allergens enters the body through inhalation or direct contact with blood vessels. The allergen presenting cells presents the antigen to the naive yeast helper cells and releases also interleukin 4 to differentiate into a helper 2 T cells. The B cell presents antigen to helper 2 T cells. These helper 2 T cells release interleukin 4 that leads to class switch of B cell to plasma cell. And this plasma cell release immunoglobulin E antibodies and immunoglobulin E binds to FC receptors located on mast cells and basophils. With subsequent exposure to, to allergens, the antigen binds to two separate IgE antibodies on the mast cells or basophils known as cross-linking. This subsequent exposure can result to mast cell release eosinophil hemostatic factor, which is um, the recruitment of this release eosinophil hemostatic factors recruit eosinophils to the parasitic inflammatory site or the region. And also, subsequent exposure can cause to cannulate that releases inflammatory mediators, including histamine. Histamine can cause primary reaction. Endothelial retraction, which can lead to leaky vessels and edema. Bronchoconstriction, which causes coughing and difficulty breathing. And vasodilation, that can cause skin redness. The second reaction is when helper 2 cells also reaches interleukin 13, which causes epithelial cells to produce mucose. The recruitment, this production of mucus recruit and activate uh, causes recruitment and activation of leukocyte like eosinophils as a T helper to release interleukin 3 and interleukin 5. Because of this, it can cause cell damage. Lipid mediators produced from arachidonic acid. The involvement of this can cause the production of prostaglandin and leukotriene. Prostaglandin, uh, 
Uh, it is the uh, it controls the process such as inflammatory blood flow and blood um, formation of blood clot. And leukotrienes is a chemical, uh, inflammatory chemical that is being released by the body after contact with the allergen or allergy trigger. This causes tightening of the airway muscles and cause a um, excess mucus production. Next is the treatment modalities and medical management. So for treatment modalities, it is to avoid latex. And medical management is epinephrine and the application of topical steroid creams or ointment. So nursing diagnoses are latex allergy related to hypersensitivity response to the protein component of NRL as evidenced by positive skin test reaction to natural rubber latex. Disturbed body image related to visible skin lesions. Risk for infection related to expurgations and breaks in the skin. And ineffective breathing related to swelling and spasm of bronchial tubes in response to inhaled irritants. The nursing interventions are protect patient from exposure to latex and use of non-latex alternative supplies when necessary. Educate the patient on four signs and symptoms of latex allergy. Educate patient on what products to avoid and contains latex rubber. Provide patient with the information on how to obtain a medical alert bracelet for latex allergy. Monitor ABG and maintain head of bed elevated. And administer medications as indicated. So that's all for allergy, for latex allergy. Thank you for watching.